Hi, everybody. Before we get to another great interview, we could really use your help. IMDB, which is the entertainment database, recently named the Two Opinionated Podcast one of its top 100 podcasts. This is a monumental feat for this program. You know, we're a father and son team out of a small town in West Virginia, have been doing this for about five years. There's 15 million podcasts out there. About 40,000 of those get to the point that they're listed on IMDb. Out of those 40,000 out of the 15 million, we are ranked number 82. Something that we're just immensely proud of. We're so thankful for our listeners, our watchers, our fans. Thank you so, so much. If you would like to help us out and we're asking for it, please. Um, it's easy. It's real, it, it's really easy. It's free. If you go to IMDB, that's IMDB.com, look up two opinionated podcasts and just take a look at the page. That's all you have to do. I mean, you're welcome to look at the cast, look at the episodes so you can kind of see who's been on the program. Do whatever you want, but even just bringing up the page, imdb.com, Two Opinionated Podcast, bring up the page, look at it. That helps us so much. So please, if you can do anything, we would really appreciate that. Um, our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. Love to have your subscription there. It's also free. And you can also check out our website, MeisterCon.com, where you'll find almost 700 episodes, audio and video, available on there. There's also a terrific blog from Brett, and it'll let you know anything that we have going on in studio, if we're covering a convention, if we're going on location, anything that we have going on will be on the website, MeisterCon.com. Thank you guys so, so much. We appreciate you so much much. I, I can't express enough how appreciative we are of all of you. We never, never expected to, to do as well as, as we have, and that's all because of you. Thank you so much. Enjoy that interview. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated. So excited today. I've got author Karen Green with me. So welcome, Karen. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. I'm pretty excited to to talk with you. the uh, uh, The new novel, I think, is is pretty pretty great. I was a uh, or am still, but I was a Jimmy Buffett fan, so yeah. I've been to like thirty of his concerts over the the year. So I took it hard when when he passed, but I knew at some point it was going to end. You know, yeah. same thing that happened with the uh, Grateful Dead. We knew it was going to end at some point. We just didn't know exactly when. Although the band's still out there. Just oh, yeah. scary with them. Yeah. And my wife, uh, she's a fish fan. So oh, yeah. the we we've taken turns over the years. We'll go to Buffett and then we'll go see fish. Fish yeah. is a little too um a little too instrumental for me. You know, the, the songs <laughs> tend to last like what yeah would think would be an entire album. It'll be one song at a fish concert. Sure do. <laughs> yep. You get your money's worth at a fish. You get concert. your money's worth. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so let's start this way, Karen. Tell me a little bit about you know what uh, what got you writing. Why'd you want to uh, to try that? It's not you know a lot of people try it. Not too many yeah. actually get to the point where the book is is published. But talk a little bit about just your writing journey. Yeah, I mean, I've always been a writer. It's it's what I do. Uh, it's who I am. I went to school for creative writing. Every job I've ever had is as a writer, which I find uh, I count myself very, very lucky that I've been yeah. able to make a living this way. And so when I'm not writing professionally, I'm writing creatively for myself. And I've always had, you know, the desire to write a novel. And I think really it came down to um, knowing that this was the right subject matter plus the time. So I had small kids for a long time. And, you know, when you finally get a little bit of breathing room, That's right. um, <laughs> right in a minute to yourself so the timing was right I think you know all the things lined up but I, I've always been a writer um you know editorial creative marketing I mean, that's pretty great because most people that end up writing a novel they don't you know their main work isn't writing they're doing yeah. it on the side where, yeah. where you're just a you're a writer yeah yeah and some people think that's a big mistake that you know <laughs> to take what you love and turn it into a career 
but I, I really, it was just what I do and it's what I'm good at. So, you know, why wouldn't I try to make a living at what I'm good at? And like I said, I've been super lucky that I have been able to do that. Um, and you know, so I write for a living and in my spare time I write. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nothing wrong with that. And you've yeah. written a, a, a few uh, children's novels or children's books, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I've written two children's books for very young readers for Fisher Price. That was several years ago. Um, but it was fun and I learned a lot from the process. And, uh, I also, I worked for a record company for many years. Um, and I was a writer for the record company. So that was kind of where I cut my teeth on um, all the different kinds of writing. And uh, and also, I've always been a music lover, but I, I obviously got such a music education working for the record company as well. Yeah, it's pretty great. Uh, my my wife works for Live Nation, so we oh, yeah. travel to, to a lot of uh, yeah. concerts and shows. That's how yeah. that's how we met. We were um, we were both working for uh, Ticketmaster. Uh, oh, cool. This has been almost 25 years ago. Uh, yeah. and, and eventually we ended up together. She stayed with the company, Live Nation bought them out and I moved, you know, I moved on. Uh, yeah. But we've always kind of shared that uh, love of music and and because of her position, we're able to travel around to a lot of, a lot of shows, which is pretty great. Not yeah, that's, that's pretty great. Amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Better to be on that side of Ticketmaster and Live Nation. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah, I don't envy her position because she deals with a lot of nonsense. Her job's pretty hard. Uh, but yeah. from my perspective, it's pretty great. <laughs> the, perks, the perks are good. The perks are good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so so the the new the the novel is Yellow Birds. So describe that a little bit. You know, how did the uh, uh, novel evolve from the work that you you're already involved in, and what's it about? Yeah. So the novel is basically a fictional version of uh, being a deadhead, a deadhead story. So um, I was, I am a deadhead, you know, we're all present tense, no matter what iteration of the band right. is, is out there. Yeah. So I was a deadhead um, when I was younger for, for numerous years until, well, I, like I said, I still am. And um, in my novel, Yellowbirds are fans who travel, fo they follow a fictional band from place to place. Um, so it is based, you know, somewhat closely on my experiences as a deadhead. And I tried to just pull back that curtain of what that scene is like. I think it's something that a lot of people have heard of, but not a lot of people really know what it's about. So uh, the yellow birds are the fans that travel and I, I tried to, uh, you know, illuminate their adventures a little bit and, and show what it's kind of really like when you're on the road doing that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, so did when you were following the dead, did you like follow the dead like if they went on tour did you just travel along with them were you that involved yeah I did several of those tours so for you know I was I was young when I started I was like 15 when I started so it was whatever shows I could get to in between you know high school really so mm -hmm. a few shows at spring break a few shows in the summer but um a few years later I was able to kind of go on full tours so I would do like the whole west coast summer tour you know take me from say Vancouver to Las Vegas and back and uh and then I did a few of those on the East Coast as well. So I've kind of experienced the, you know, drop in, drop out, as well as the stay on tour for a couple months at a time. When when you were in kind of the staying on tour mode, did you run into a lot of the same people? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's half the fun. Yeah, yeah. You, you really build a community and you get to know the community and you can't know everybody and it is transient. But you do. You, you get to know a lot of people yeah. and, and that's the fun part, seeing them in all these different cities you know, like people that you met in Oregon and then you see them again in Arizona or something. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's pretty great. And and those um, groups or acts uh, like that, you know, it's it's a lot of times you're in a, a, a festival type of setting, like in a field, you know, where where you're you're basically pre gaming before the concert, sometimes yeah. a day or two before the concert. And yeah. that was always my favorite part. Because the people, 99% of them are great. You know, they're just, they're, they just are sharing a love of music. You kind of put all your other troubles to the side and just share the experience together. I mean, you're going to run into a knucklehead once in a while, but for the most part, the people are terrific, you know, and that kind of walking around and just, you know, uh, enjoying the atmosphere. That was always my favorite part. And that was even before the music started. Yeah, I think that that's one of the best parts as well. And I really write a lot about in the book, I really try to bring that to life. 
yeah. um, and show people what it was like. Cause I think it's, you know, people hear that you're just, you know, in a van going from city to city. Why would you do that? It sounds disgusting. It sounds awful. <laughs> so I really tried to, to show what it's like when that's happening. You know, like you said, it's like a pre game. It was tailgating before there was tailgating, but it's more than that because you really need to rely on this community for everything. When you're sitting in a parking lot for two or three days before a show starts or, or what in between shows, you need food, you need things nice to price. wear, you need, you know, you need everything. Um, so I, I really tried to show how uh, deep and diverse that community really is and, and how people really do rely on each other. And there's a, there's a knucklehead or two in there as well. <laughs> always, always. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, so what kind of van did you ride around in? What kind of van or vehicle are they riding yeah. around in, in the book? Was it similar? Did you have like the, like the Volkswagen van or, or was it something similar to that? So I have had adventures in a Volkswagen bus, but that one doesn't play into this story. So uh, the, the van in question in this story is called Big Blue Bertha and Big Blue Bertha did exist. I did travel in her up and down the West Coast. Um, she was uh, she was a great vehicle and it was six of us packed into this van for a number of weeks. She wasn't always so reliable, but you know, we loved her anyway. So Big Blue Bertha does play a big part in this book. She is uh, a primary mode of transportation and I'm writing what I know. I have firsthand experience with this. <laughs> yeah. And she's like a big Ford, like a Conaline kind of a van. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 When I, I got my driver's license in the family station wagon, which was a 70 yeah. station wagon. We called it the, <laughs> uh, the Blue Goose is what we oh, yeah. is what we called it. But I went to some concerts. In yeah. The, it wasn't terrible. The best. Yeah. yeah it's the terrible. best. Because you can yeah, pile nice. a ton of people in there. Yeah. Take a nap if you need to. We used to <laughs> we used to pile like a whole baseball team into the back, and there was so many of us in there you couldn't even shut the back door. So the you know the back's just yeah. open, and you got yeah. just feet hanging out. And I look at that, I look back on that, and I'll be like, "What were we thinking?" Because you I were know. doing it today, it'd be dangerous as all get out. But we, that's how we used to travel. <laughs> yeah, you're you're packed in so tough that nobody's going anywhere. That's right. that, that was the safety. <laughs> <laughs> that's the safety part. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't move to fall out it was fine no that's right so did yeah. so are some of the the stories in the book based on things that you actually went through yeah and I tried really hard to make sure that you know nobody was going to recognize themselves in this book right. I didn't want to uh to do that everybody that you know I kind of come across in this book is a composite of people that I did know yeah. on tour so you know parts of them did exist I I did have some of these experiences again not not exactly the same, but I did build off of it. I, I certainly built some of my very favorite places that I've been to into this yeah. book. Um, and, you know, I also wanted to make sure that people knew that it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. There were some um, sketchy moments and I did experience a few sketchy moments on tour. You're bound to, uh, but you learn from those and you just got to be smart about it and uh, surround yourself with smart people and you'll be okay. So I, I did try to build those into into the book as well. Yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you have to have a group or at least a person that if you're not a hundred percent coherent, they can be there to kind of be, you know, a, a safety net. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's so important because it's so easy to, to not get enough to eat or to drink and you end up drinking too much alcohol. And the next thing you know, you're kind of out of it. And that's when yeah. bad things happen. If you don't have that person to kind of like, you know, babysit you for a little while. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. And when you're in a in a um an experience like this, a community like this, you really have to trust people, right? Yeah. Like you rely on other people so so much. And you know, sometimes you trust the wrong person, at least temporarily. So, you know, I didn't shy away from those things. There's they're certainly in the book. Yeah. Um, but also the people that you really can rely on and who have your back and who are your ride or die, they're in the book as well. We went to a um a Jimmy Buffett concert in Ohio back in the uh early 90s and it was um it was in a field and it just poured the rain for two or three straight yeah. days to the to the point that the whole thing was just a mud pit and you couldn't get out you know the cars were just stuck in the mud and mm -hmm. you, you I think we ended up staying we were there basically another day yeah. waiting you know for it to dry enough to to get out of that did, did you have any experiences like that where the yeah played a factor yeah, I wonder if you're talking about Buckeye Lake, Ohio. Oh, I totally <laughs> am. 
Yep. Yeah, I knew that. I knew that. Um, so I saw shows there as well. And some <laughs> of my favorite shows were there because it is just that open field. Like you're just yeah. in a big farm field, it felt like. Um, but yeah, definitely the weather is one of the things that you cannot control yeah. um, and it holds you up. And uh, in, in my own experiences, absolutely, we had to deal with the weather. And sometimes it rained, you know, the shows just were awful and muddy and rained out. Um, but actually the weather also played a part in uh, one of the shows that we saw in, in well, several of them in Las Vegas. It actually was just so hot that mm, people yeah. didn't even want to go into the show, right? Like it was, you're outside and that's the thing, you're outside all day, maybe for two days beforehand and you're just, you're baking and there's no relief. And at that particular uh, set of shows in, in Nevada, and it was at the University of Las Vegas, Nevada, yeah. I remember there being tickets hanging from trees. Like people were like, I'm giving up, I'm going home. I can't do this. I can't do an outdoor show at this point. And so anybody that wanted to get into that show could have because literally people were were abandoning it. It was so so hot, devastating. Okay, I'm just trying to think how hot would be too hot for me. It probably wouldn't take much because yeah. I was feeling uncomfortable. Yeah, I'm Canadian, right? So <laughs> I love the summer, but it was like I I don't know. It, it, I don't even know. It must have been like 110, 115. Oh and you're just out there that, you know, and it's not like, and we're traveling in these old vans. They don't have air conditioning. There's no relief, right? Shade. That's maybe your only relief. If you can find it, I actually have a fantastic picture of my sister sitting in front of a van. She literally looks like she's melting at this show. My poor sister. So uh, that, that is how we felt um, rain for sure. I built that into the story as well. There, they definitely come across some inclement weather that changes some plans and makes things feel more urgent, you know? So I've got a, uh, a close friend that uh, met his wife at a, at a Buffett show, and and um, uh, they got pregnant at a Buffett show. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been kind of funny because now that was thirty years ago. You know, yeah. now that baby is grown and has babies of her own, and it just always, you know, we're still giving them a hard time about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did did they name the baby after one of the songs or anything? No, and that's what I no. said. I was like, you missed the perfect opportunity there. It is a miss. I have two daughters, and one of them is named after a Grateful Dead song. Oh, very nice. <laughs> nice. Do you have yeah. Do you have a favorite song? I'm guessing that may be it. Uh, so that's probably my husband's favorite song. Um, my favorite song from the Dead is "Morning Dew," which uh, that's actually that's a little song. known. Yeah, it's actually a cover. It, it was an old, old, old blues yeah. song, um, and it's about the end of the world. And I really like it. <laughs> you know, that's that's one thing with the uh, uh, Dead is that they had so much music and a lot of it was never ever really released i mean it might be attached to something else but never you know so a lot of it was unknown until you heard it at a show yeah with that which was kind of nice because you know if you're a multiple show follower yeah it's nice when it's a little different each show <laughs> oh every show is so different and that's the that's beauty of it right because you would go and you would hear things that you only hear live and so it's such a treat right and it's such it's such a surprise when you hear those shows and it's always something different and i think that's why those communities and and those habits can be sustained why would you want to go see the exact same show every single night like no shade to taylor swift my goodness what a show she puts on but we know it's the same every single night Sure. Good thing because you can only afford to go to one. But you know, with the with the dead, with fish, with Buffett, I'm assuming, you know, with all of these touring bands like this, every show is a different experience and a different vibe. Yeah. Yeah. And and I know and and fans of those type of uh acts, they they tend to like they'll share the set list or they'll try to guess the set list ahead of time, yes. that type of thing. I always thought yes. it was just the best because it was yes. ways they were connecting that weren't really directly related to the music they were kind of yeah. alongside it but not directly related and i always thought that was neat because normally yeah. you know if you like a, a a singer and i like a singer we'll we'll bond over that but if you follow say the dead then you're that that bonding is just much more intricate there's a lot of different you know things yeah. that go into it there really is and there's a lot of um ted fans that are such technical dead fans right like they can tell you all of those things. They can call what the show is going to be before they hear it. They can tell you, 
you know, they can listen to a song and tell you the exact era by the sound of the guitar or the speakers or something like that. Um, you know, I feel like I do have that technical training just from my background and in, in music and stuff, but that's not exactly the kind of fan I am. I'm more about the people and the, the music. But, you know, in talking to friends of mine, other deadheads who have read the book, they we've talked about the fact that you can't you can't encompass all of those kinds of things in, in one place. So I um, I give a nod to the to the technical fans and things like that, and the tapers, right? The people that tape every show oh, and they're yeah. so dedicated. Yeah, that's I love hard it. work. I, it it is. It is. It totally is. And it's listen, it's like it's God's work. You're giving us the music, right? Like you're making it available for everybody else. And that was the, you know, that's an unspoken um rule with the Grateful Dead. That's the contract, is that they let the tapers in, but you distribute it for free. Like you can trade, but you never charge. And so you know what a what a democratic egalitarian process that is, right? That everybody gets to have the music. It doesn't you know they don't keep it to themselves right. listen they re they release live albums all the time but really you can you can find just about any show you want which is such a beautiful thing that is pretty nice so if, if you're yeah. a fan yeah you can go back and pretty much watch all their shows yeah if yeah you want to. it's amazing yeah it's great now i love it yeah yeah that's not too bad what was uh what was your first concert um so my first concert was albany new york on march 15th 1991 um, and it was a bus tour that we took, like some, some kids like put together like a bus, you know, package, you get a ticket on the Greyhound, you get a hotel room and you get, uh, two nights of, of dead shows in Albany. So that was my nice. first experience. The double, the double the show. The double, yeah. And I, I had like just turned 16. I was quite young. Um, yeah, yeah. I had just turned 16. Um, and then after that kind of went, went to more on my own, um, you know, almost right away. So, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, that's pretty. That's that's pretty uh, great. Have you ever seen the dead indoors? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh sure. Wait, Lots well, of... How was those shows? Because I've seen Jimmy Buffett. I saw yeah. him a few times inside, once in Vegas. Those shows I was a little disappointed in, but I don't think it had anything to do with him. It was just the the overall experience wasn't quite as good because you didn't get that day ahead of time. Totally. And you know, when you're in arena, I mean, it's it's not quite the same. Now the Grateful Dead are nothing to look at. So it's not like you're necessarily missing right. the show if you're not paying attention to the stage. It's not that, right? Like, yeah. um, but, but it's, it's kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're there listening to the music, but it doesn't really matter if you're next to the stage or all the way in the back. The exactly. Same. But it is a different vibe. And the other thing is that um, deadheads don't really respect the, you know, seat assignments in, <laughs> in places like that. Like it's just another unspoken rule. So if you want to, you, you don't really, you do have a ticket. That's what gets you in, but there might be somebody sitting your, in your seat and there's nothing you can do about it. So you never know where you're going to end up. Whereas, right. you know, in a lovely outdoor venue, you're just all outside. Who cares? Yeah. It's, it's, you're just in a field yeah. most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Or up on a hill, right? Something like that. <laughs> yeah. Those ones on it. a hill can be rough because, because you're out there <laughs> drinking all day and then you got to go up the hill to see the concert. Oh, yeah. So I was in, we were in Indiana this summer and, and it's one of those wonderful venues at Deer Creek. Um, and it is a great venue, but the hill is quite steep and we were like a bit at the top of it. And I was trying to dance. I'm like, oh, I'm too old for this. Like my knees hurt <laughs> dancing on this hill, you know? <laughs> That's <laughs> not the same as when I was a teenager. You don't worry about it, 16. No, not at all. As you not get older though, your body kind yes. of forces you to pay attention. Yes, I used to fall asleep sitting at, at picnic tables, you know? And <laughs> now I'm like, we need a hotel. It needs to be a little bit out of town, so it's quiet. You know? <laughs> they used yeah. to have a, a little festival here in West Virginia where it was basically a weekend, and you're in a tent, and it's just nonstop bands coming through that's playing. It's pretty great. Yeah. And I used to do that, but as I got older, I was like, at night, we're going to need to go to a hotel. We'll come that's back right. in the morning, but that's I'm not right. staying there all night anymore. Yes. That's right. And I don't mind. I'm okay with that. I'm okay Me that too. we've gotten to that point. <laughs> yeah, I accept it. <laughs> when you were writing this book, it was like a soundtrack playing in your head. Like if this, if this got made into a movie, oh yeah. do you already have songs that you would like to put in it? Of course I do. Of course. I have a whole Spotify playlist. Um, I should release it actually. I should make that, you I should. should share that playlist. Yeah, I absolutely do. And um, yes, I think that, yeah, it's, I absolutely. I mean, because the about it. the uh, song track to a movie on this book could be yeah. epic. 
I think it'd be great. Yeah. And funny enough, it's not, it's not like it's all Grateful Dead songs. It's not at all, you know, like there's stuff from um, the early nineties, there's stuff from, you know, there's some more classic stuff and there's some stuff that is not exactly contemporary, but some stuff that is a little bit more contemporary, Yeah. but yeah, for sure. I had that soundtrack going the whole time. And um, that's, that's kind of how I write. Like, you know, I feel the vibe, I feel the mood and then that's the easy part. And then trying to find the words that match it is a little bit more difficult. Um, but I feel like I, I always have the soundtrack going in my head yeah. for sure. Are you, yeah. uh, are you musical? Uh, not myself. I just, I just appreciate it. Yeah, same. My my yeah. yeah. My children are musical. I, I didn't, I didn't get it. <laughs> yeah. I just yeah, appreciate it. I, I, same. I, I came from a family of musicians and I got none of it. <laughs> hey, someone's got to be the fan, right? Well, I can do that. I was like, I'll Me too. Yeah. I'm that's fine important. With yeah, Being a fan really in a lot of ways is much easier. <laughs> yes, it is. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. I just yeah. show up, clap, yell. All good. Yeah, that's right. I don't mind at all. I so who it. who stars in the movie Adaption? Okay, so we've had that conversation as well. So the I knew problem you had. is, yeah. So the <laughs> problem is my protagonists are are young adults, um, and I don't know any young adult actors anymore. <laughs> oh yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, but I guess in my head, um, and I'm going to date myself here, my protagonist was, uh, so the role of Horizon, who's a male protagonist, that would have been um, a cross between a young Leonardo DiCaprio and River Phoenix. So that's that's who I pictured. Uh, I mean, when I was no, writing. no, uh, you're not aiming too high there. No, 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 no pressure for any, any actors, no, any young actors, no. People forget um, but... <laughs> just how good River Phoenix was. He was an amazing actor. I don't forget. I mean, he I, basically yeah. was DiCaprio before DiCaprio. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and he was my first love, and I, I loved all of his movies, and Stand By Me was, like, formative, yeah. you know, and uh, um, I loved it so much, so um, I think because I came of age with those with those actors, so that's who I always think of, um, so as far as casting goes, I'm going to have to um, get my teenagers to help me, and uh, I'll probably, you know, we'll see who they pick but yeah I I think um I tried to keep it like I said I'd like that's who I thought of but I tried to keep it you know I want I want readers to be able to visualize who they think those right. characters are you yeah. know so I tried to keep it a little bit loose um I do describe them of course you have some idea but I like people to kind of figure it out on their own and and come well that's fun own. as a fan trying yeah. to do that kind of fan yeah thing. yeah it is yeah, yeah. Hey, maybe one day we'll find out. I'd love to. <laughs> I'd love you know, to. I think um, I've read, uh, you know, uh, examples of your writing. You're very talented. It's very Thank well you. written. And I could totally see this story becoming, you know, a, a sh it, it seems to me, it's like an Amazon show. They always tend to yeah. do music shows. I could totally see them yeah. as, a, yeah. as a show, not a movie. I could see yeah. it as a series. Wouldn't that be great? I think partly, yeah, it would be amazing to me. And, and, you know, I hope that that, you know, that you think that way because this is based on, you know, things that kind of have are, have happened, like not, yeah. not entirely, but you know, this, I, this isn't a world I did make it up, you know, for the book, but it kind of existed already. So right. um, hopefully it is plausible, you know, yeah. so that's, that's a great thing to say. Thank you. Well, and any of us that have been in those types of situations following a band, we're going to relate to it. Yeah. Yeah, because it is. I it's a so. whole community when when you're there. Yeah. yeah, do you know? I just wanted I wanted people to people, music lovers to love this book, right? Yes. So whether you've been on tour with a band or even not, I think anybody who loves music is going to hopefully identify what I'm what I'm talking about in this book. And you know, I always go back to like Bob Marley saying, "When when the music hits, you feel no pain," right? Right. And that's that's really what it's about for me and for this book that you just you feel it so deeply and so i hope people do yeah and i think they will because because just as people we tend to connect with music you know music it has that ability to bring you back to a moment in time just from yeah. a note from a song which is pretty incredible um you know when you get older you struggle a little bit recapturing those memories but yeah. then you hear a song and suddenly you're back in it it's so true yeah it's so true yeah yeah it's pretty uh Pretty, pretty great. Pretty great. If so, yeah. if you were following a band today, mm -hmm. is there one out there that you would follow? I know you follow the dead still, but 
let's yeah. take them out of the equation. Is there one you would follow? Um, I wouldn't say that I'm like a super fan anymore. I, I just love going to see live music. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if there's anybody that I, at this point, I could like dedicate that much time yeah. and energy it's to. It's a lot of time. It is. It is. Yeah. I tend to but go I'm, now more for like a uh, bucket list people I want to see. Yeah. So yeah. I don't necessarily have to see them a hundred times, but once would yeah. be. Yeah. Once. Yeah. Who are, who's next? I'm not, I'm not sure who's who's next. I've I've done um uh Frankie Valley. I got to see oh. uh Stevie Wonder. Uh oh, amazing. We saw yeah, Stevie Wonder was was incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh Atlantis Morissette, we saw at the uh, oh, Austin cool. City Limits. And I didn't yeah. think that that I would enjoy it as much as I did, but just the atmosphere, you know, because everybody yeah. knows those songs. And yeah. and just you know all those people kind of singing together and enjoy it. It was it was pretty great. It was pretty. Yeah, great. I bet. Yeah, I know my yeah. uh, wife's a, a big uh, Green Day fan, so that's oh, on yeah. the list to get to at some point. So mm -hmm. we want at some point we'll we'll track uh, them down. And then there's a um, uh, an English band called the Heavy that that we followed for a while, but we've never seen them in concert. So I'd love to see those. Cool. Who who cool. are yours? Is there some that you would that are kind of on your bucket list? Um, yeah, I feel lucky. I've seen a lot um, that I've wanted to. I've always, I guess, I've wanted to see Pearl Jam, and I've never seen Pearl Jam. Oh, that'd be a good one. Yeah, so I've never seen Pearl Jam. Um, I did, I saw Dolly Parton a couple of years ago, so she was bucket list, and I did yeah, get yeah, to yeah. see Same. her. Same. Yeah, we so. we we marked her off, and, and yeah, she's oh, amazing. Yeah. Um, you know what? Neil Young is coming back near me this summer and I have seen Neil Young and I have seen CSNY, but I think I would really like to see Neil Young one more time. Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping I can get there. Um, yeah, I don't know. You uh, too. I'd never seen you too. I bet you that would be you good. Too? Yeah, I would uh, yeah. Uh, I'd love yeah. to have seen them at the sphere when they were there. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. The dead are going or dead and company are going to the sphere and that'll be a trip. They'll be at the sphere this summer. Um, my sister's actually going. That'll be such a trip. Oh, it'll be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can't even imagine. Yeah. Pretty great. <laughs> yeah. So I, I when I told you I worked for uh, Ticketmaster for a while, yeah. I did a uh, show in Charlottesville, Virginia, uh, that it was the Dave Matthews band, but Neil Young opened for them. Oh. So, you know, I, I was very early in my career with Ticketmaster, but I, you know, I, I got there and basically got to see his whole concert before the concert you know because he did he like did his final warm-up in the mm -hmm. afternoon before the night show so i got to see the whole set and it was just me and a couple other people sitting right there in front watching so that was pretty That's incredible because he'd stop yeah. and yell stuff out at us and stuff and <laughs> interact a little bit it was pretty uh pretty great that was also yeah. i was wandering around and i came upon a tent that had uh a buffet food station set up <laughs> and you know i'm a young guy i'm like oh okay so i just got in line got my food i didn't you know and and went and i sat down started eating and then you know i'm kind of just in my own little world and i looked up and i had sat down at the table with the dave matthews band and didn't even realize and so then i was just keeping my head down trying to be unnoticed so i could yeah. just kind of absorb you know, this little bit of time yeah. with the Dave Matthews band. So that was, it was pretty, it was a pretty great uh, whole concert experience for me. Yeah. It sounds and amazing. that was even before the show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That sounds amazing. I love Dave as well. I've seen Dave many times. Yeah. Love his shows too. Yeah. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. So does Yellow Birds is, do we have some uh, romance within the book? We do. We do. There is an unexpected romance. So um Kate is the female protagonist and she's the you know we follow her on tour and you know uh, one day without ever expecting to she meets this guy named Horizon and um as does happen when you're in these situations they get to know each other a little bit and he's like do you want to come with me to the next show and you know that that is what happens right everybody yeah. feels like we're all on the same trip we're all going in the same direction sure I'll go with you for a little while and so um I would say the first kind of half of the book is about their uh, burgeoning romance and what happens there. And it's it, at the backdrop of all of these shows and going through all this kind of chaos and craziness and how they navigate that. Yeah. yeah that's pretty, that's pretty great. Where did you come up with the name horizon? Oh, I knew somebody named. Horizon. I figured that's a, that's a cool name. 
yeah yeah like that sounds yeah. like a musician yeah yeah it's and I write a lot about names and identities in the book right because when you're when you're in a in a community like this people take on whatever name they want right like maybe right. I don't want to be Karen especially these days maybe I don't want to be Karen maybe I'll call myself rainbow or something like that right yeah. um, but that happens so much in these communities and so I write a lot about that you know the names that people are given the names that they take who it makes them you know who they turn out to be and and how we accept those parts of people as well so that plays a big part of it yeah that that kind of brings up a a, a good point because you could become a completely different person than you are in your normal life That's and right. it'd be fine you could be that yep. person there and then you know your regular self when you're yep. not touring <laughs> that's right and i write a lot about that in the book actually about you know in this place at this time this is who they are and yeah. maybe that's not who they can be when they're home or maybe that's not who they want to be when they're home but they can be whoever they want to be on this tour and it's so freeing right it's such yeah. a there's there's so much freedom in that and I mean it also does come with the, the fact that a lot of people are kind of running away from something or escaping something and they want this new identity to go with you know this new path that they're on uh, but that's definitely part of it and and that's you know a true part of it is it um I, it just from talking with people that that have have kind of lived that lifestyle that traveling and stuff it's difficult sometimes when you have to choose to end it, you know, when, when you get to that point where you're like, you know, I can't, I can't afford to travel the country anymore, or maybe, maybe I've got a family now and it's not as convenient and stuff. Do you touch on any of that? Cause I know for some people, that's a very difficult transition when they have yes, to stop. Absolutely. I touch on the beginnings of them, of these things. And I touch on the ends of these things. And sometimes the end is a choice and sometimes it's not a choice. Right. Um, and, and I look at that as well, but either way it can be very difficult and very bittersweet. Um, and I also write that there's, you know, for, for me, and I think for a lot of people, there's always a moment right at the very beginning, right when I'm embarking on this journey or right when I get there, there's like a, a tiny moment where I wish it was already over, right? Like I wish that we were just at the end of it and I was back on my way home already and we've gotten through it and it's not that I want it to be over it's just that you're, you're anticipating so much and um, so I write about that but then I write about you know how very bittersweet that end moment can be especially when we don't choose it it's kind of funny because I would go to concerts and stuff and almost feel a little bit nervous yeah. before I get there and it's not like I'm doing anything yeah and that's exactly what it is. And that's what I mean by like, you almost wish that it would just be over already yeah. and you'll have, you'll have done it and you'll know that you'll have gotten through it and it's behind you because you know, the unknown is so exciting, but it is also nerve wracking. Yeah, it's a little scary. Um, <laughs> it, it really is. I think it's the, the things that we anticipate the most are also, you know, a little bit, um, they're a little bit scary to face as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. even, even when it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what's, uh, what's next? Or is, do you have another book that you're working on? Is it uh, connected to this one? Is it completely different? What What do you have coming up next? Yeah, well, it's funny because I didn't realize how many people would say to me, okay, so you're writing the sequel, right? right. <laughs> um, and, and I, you know, and I think I, I won't give anything away, but I, I guess I purposely leave it at a place where maybe some, that is a, uh, uh, it is a valid question to ask me if I'm writing a sequel, but the truth is no, I'm not, we're going to leave, we're going to leave these people where they are. Um, and I am working on something new. Um, I've been working on it for a little while, actually. So, so I'm motivated to finish at this point. <laughs> but is yes, it, it's is total, it totally related, like, is it related to the music industry at all or completely different? No, it is completely different. Yeah. Well, that's probably it's, awesome. It's probably fun. Yeah. It is fun. It is. And it, it allows me to uh, explore some of the other things that I really love and I'm really passionate about as well. And, I, you know, I hope that certain things kind of remain the same. I hope that, you know, we find characters that we can relate to and love and, yeah. you know, some some trouble that people get in so we can watch them get out of it. You know, that's kind of the fun in a book. Yeah. Is the, is the second working on the second book easier than the first book or just as hard? It's just as hard. <laughs> yeah, I figured. I figured because some would I, yeah. say, well, you're, you know, you can do it. Yeah. So maybe that makes it a little easier. I was like, but you still got to do it. <laughs> you still got to do it. I think I know more. I know, you know, yeah. so in, in, a, in a, a little bit, maybe the editing will be easier, um, but not, not the writing. <laughs> not no. yet. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. It's like any big project, right? Yeah. If you do a sequel, what if we added in zombies? Oh, that would be great. Yes. 
Yes, we could, right? We absolutely could. Have we zombies had a like, festival setting with zombies? That that might be a little I bit. don't know if we should. I, I mean, I think zombies make everything better usually, right. right? Like it's just we you always want to put your characters in peril. So I think that that would do it. Um, I'd be down. I'd be down. Maybe maybe like a novella to go with. Oh, a no novella would be yeah. good. Yeah. I'm kind right? of picturing like you've got, you know, festival goers that have been turned into a zombie. But they're still music lovers. So they'll be like yeah. chasing you and then just suddenly stop to listen to the music. <laughs> oh, that's good. And I, I do have this habit of like everywhere where I am, I'm like, okay, so how could we escape this place, right? So if there were zombies here, how would we get out? Um, yeah. I blame The Walking Dead for that. I blame like six oh, seasons of The Walking Dead, right? Like, so now everywhere you go, you think about, well, if that happens you, You're here, looking for the exit. Absolutely, yes, <laughs> yes. Or at least the person who runs slower than you right just oh, get yeah. in front of them yeah yeah, yeah. You don't yeah need if to you be see the somebody you know with a with a walker or maybe a, a broken leg or something you're like okay there's push them yeah <laughs> there's my way out <laughs> you don't have to be the fastest you just can't be the slowest that's, right. that's all right that's <laughs> our lesson for today yeah mm. yeah 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 our little uh zombie survival tip of the day just we've done it we've faster saved the world. than somebody be faster than somebody. That's all it takes to survive. <laughs> and good music. And then you're settled. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, or, or where can we, you know, find Yellowbirds? Where can we purchase it? You can find Yellowbirds anywhere you like to buy books. So if it's, if you don't see it on the shelves in store, it's definitely online at all of those stores. Um, if you like to buy from a, a smaller bookstore, just go in and, and request it and they can definitely order it if they're not carrying it. Um, so I just encourage anybody to buy books wherever they love to buy books. Is it neat seeing your book on a shelf in a bookstore? Pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, not going to lie. <laughs> I think I'd just be showing up at local bookstores and just hanging out next to my book, you know, with maybe, <laughs> maybe it turned around some of my pictures there and stuff. Right? I mean, That's like, right. just in case somebody would recognize me, I'd be like, oh, did you need me to sign it? I <laughs> <laughs> right? I know. I think it's kind of fun, but once or twice you can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Until yeah. they chase you out. <laughs> yes. Until they say, can you please buy something and then get out? Yeah. Just yes. go. <laughs> yes. Well, Karen, thank yeah. you so much for taking a little bit of time uh, with the book looks amazing. You know, I know thank you. Uh, my wife and I ordered a, a copy because we want to actually be able to hold it to uh, that's, that's how thank we prefer you. to, to yeah. read. So we're looking forward to that, you know, big music lovers. So I think it's going to be a, a, a fun read, but I'll have to let you know. I'll let you know what we officially, please do. I know we're going yes. to Oh, please <laughs> do. I'm so glad. Um, that makes me really happy. And thank you so much for having me on to talk about it. This has been a great conversation. It's been oh, a lot of fun. Well, thank you for coming on. Yeah. This, you know, when you get the next one, this mystery yeah. novel you're working on, not that it's a mystery, <laughs> you have to come back. I absolutely will. I would love yeah, to. Yeah. So, yeah. um, before I let you go, uh, where can we find you? Where can we find uh, the book on social media? Yeah, um, you can go to my website, www.karengreen.ca. Um, I'm online on Instagram, um, Karen Green underscore author. Um, yep. I try not to spend too, too much time on social media because I like to stay sane. Um, <laughs> I, used to, I used to live on social media. I can't do it anymore. No, um, but, it's, a, yeah. it's an energy drain. It is. It is. And I just don't have that energy for it anymore. But um, yeah, visit me on Instagram and on my website. Um, anybody can send me a message. I'd love to do book clubs. Um, uh, I'd love to show up at book clubs. Yeah. Visits anywhere. Yeah. Hit me up. I'm around. You know, we have a uh, West Virginia book fair. Oh, it's, when is it? It's okay. usually in October. I love West Virginia. It's so beautiful. It's the, best. That is the best. Yeah. If you if you like the outdoors, it's a very good yes. state. Yes. And we don't have that many people here. So you can yeah. avoid all the lines and the uh, traffic. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. more people in L.A. than we have in the whole state. Yeah, I come to do my shopping for Fiesta Wear in West Virginia. Oh, yeah. So you're going I to uh, Flatwoods probably. West yeah, Virginia. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've made many trips to Flatwoods for um, Beautiful. My, and my mother, you know. For the fiesta wear and my grandma yeah. before we used to go yeah with yeah that's yeah. so beautiful yeah it's kind of neat it. uh, seeing what collars they feature each year yep yeah it is yeah and then it. you got all the people that are like in the back room 
going through the uh you know the the previous callers that are that's right yeah <laughs> or the or you can like get you can get great deals right if there's a little something that looks wrong to them it's not wrong to me you can get yeah deals. you can get good deals yeah. yeah yeah love it we started doing that and then uh, my wife started taking pottery classes and now she just makes oh, them. Like, yeah, that's I, great. That's, yeah, it's like we don't need to go to flatwoods we'll just let you make it <laughs> that's nice yeah yeah probably save some money <laughs> Well, Karen, open invitation. You just reach thank out you. when you get the next project ready and we'll bring you back. But this has been great. Thank you so much. This has been. Thank you so much for having me. You're so welcome. Okay, hold on one second. That was author Karen Green. The book is Yellow Birds. It's out now. I think you're really going to like it. Um, Karen is a very talented writer. She does a great job. Um, helping you visualize the scenes and what is uh, going on. And if you've ever, ever experienced that following of a musical group, whether it was the dead or, or the fish, Jimmy Buffett, whoever it is, if you've experienced that, or if you've just experienced that festival atmosphere, I think you're going to find a lot in this book that you relate to. It's, it's really, really well done. So please help Karen out and support her with uh, Yellowbirds and uh, pick up a, a copy. With that, if you're finding us for the first time, appreciate you. So happy that you're here. There's a couple of easy ways that you can support us if you're willing. Um, our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. All we ask is that you subscribe. It's free. Really helps us out. Um, our website is MeisterCon.com. You can watch uh, all of our episodes, audio and video. I think right now we're on 756 and counting. We normally put out about four episodes a week, so we're fairly uh, high volume. I guarantee there'll be a ton of people that you uh, that you love, that you're interested in, that uh, that you can discover. Uh, definitely, you know, check out our previous episodes. If you go to IMDb.com. That's the entertainment database. They they recently named us a top 100 podcast, uh, 15 million or so podcasts out there to be on anybody's top 100 list. Pretty uh, pretty special. Um, if you go to imdb.com, look up the two opinionated podcasts, just bringing the page up, which is free, um, that traffic on the page really helps us out. And it'll list, you know, we've had maybe 800 or so um, guests on the show uh, it'll list all of those so you can see the terrific uh, actors directors writers musicians that we've had on the show um, so there you go thank you guys so so much till next time bye everybody hi everybody i'm once again here to ask for your support it's been a big year for the two opinionated podcast back in february we got to live out a dream moderate for William Shatner here in our hometown. In May, we passed 100,000 downloads on our YouTube channel, and we followed that up in June with 50,000 downloads on the audio side. We recently posted our 600th episode, which is pretty good volume for just a uh, father and son operation. You know, not too many podcasts can keep that volume up. We've been doing this now for four and a half years. 600 plus episodes. We recently hit 1,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel, which is a really big deal for us because we've always gotten the views but have struggled to get people to subscribe. So that 1,000 was a big deal for us. And best of all, we were recently named one of the top podcasts on IMDb, which is the entertainment database. You know, those that are ahead of us, we came in at number 82. Those that are ahead of us are bigger companies like Disney, mostly Marvel, and Joe Rogan, that type of uh, podcast. So for us, being just a, a small West Virginia father and son podcast to be in the top 100 out of 15 million, it's a pretty big deal for us. So thank you for everything you've done for us so far. Got a couple little ways, though, that you can help us, and they're free, and they're really easy. If you haven't checked out our YouTube channel yet, please go to YouTube. It's under MeisterCon Pod. Just hit subscribe. It's free. doesn't cost you anything. really helps us a ton. And maybe even more important, 
If you could go to IMDB, IMDB.com, look up the Two Opinionated Podcast, and just look around the page. Just having that traffic on the page really helps us out. So that's a couple easy ways that you can support us, even if you're not listening or watching all of the time. And we want you to listen and watch, because I think that our, our guest list, I would put up against anybody. Any other show, podcast, anybody out there, I think our guest list holds up. So please check us out. You you probably will find somebody that you like or maybe somebody that you didn't know you liked but kind of discovered them on there. There's tons of that. If you're into music, we have that too. If you like books, we've got authors on there. If, you, if you're more into what goes on behind the scenes in the entertainment world, you know, we've got producers, directors, um, video artists, anything you can think of that happens behind the scenes. We've had them on the show. So definitely check us out. Thank you guys so, so much. Until next time. Bye, everybody.